Google users around the world. This is a package that is used by literally every important game developer and every important movie studio. It's also increasingly used by companies that are using it for architectural simulations or architectural renderings. These projects are becoming so grand and so expensive. In order to compete for those very limited jobs, architectural firms have to put their best foot forward. They have to help their clients visualize what the project is really going to look like. A sketch is no longer good enough. You have to help them visualize it and feel it in a photorealistic way. Now we've been working with Autodesk and especially the 3ds Max team for quite a long time. We worked in areas related to Quadro for interactive previewing. We've worked in the area of Mental Ray, the first ray tracer that has been uh, incorporated into 3ds Max. Um, today, we're going to announce a giant step forward in our collaboration and introduce to the world a capability that is just never seen before. To help me introduce that idea, make that announcement, I'd like to welcome Ken Pimentel, Mr. Marketing for 3 ds Max, and Michael Kaplan. Michael, welcome. Good morning. Hi. Michael is uh, one of the one of the uh, the brains behind what we're about to see. Definitely. Well, before we get going, why don't you guys tell us a little bit about 3ds Max and, and uh, let's see, we're going to pop it on the screen, right? Yeah, we can uh, show the. Monitor Maybe if they could just see 3ds Max. This is what 3ds Max looks like, and and Ken, help help us understand what do people do with 3ds Max. Well, they do a lot of different things, and in this case, we're showing you the viewport for 3ds Max. This is where uh, an artist would uh, create their reality, uh, move things around, uh, and set up uh, the vision that they want to show to their uh, stakeholders. Mm -hmm. So what we, we're going to show you here is a uh, typical scene that an architect might be working with. This is an indoor scene. And what they want to do is have a, a photo reel uh, experience for their uh, important stakeholder that's coming to, to meet them. So they've hit the rendering button. And, and so, so the first thing you do is you simulate, you, you, you capture the, 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 the 3D scene, the geometry of the scene. And of course, you, you have to place onto it textures, and, and you've got to program, you've got to dress it up, mm -hmm, dress it up. Uh, you know, it comes from tools like Revit and AutoCAD or an inventor bringing all this data in uh -huh. and then in 3ds Max you aggregate it and dress it up and create something more real, you know, uh -huh. and bring the, the person into the design through photorealism. And at some point you're happy with your design, <laughs> yes. um, and, but you're, you're still not sure, you just want to preview it and right. um, to see what it's really going to look like and so you have to do a photorealistic realistic render. And so back in the good old days, we would either, either look at it like this in a wireframe mode and then, of course, in some of our earlier collaborations, we could actually render this uh, with textures and, and right. shading. And, uh, but it's not photorealistic. No. It's about as photorealistic as a game. Right. And so we know it's not photorealistic. And, and at some point, Mental Ray was incorporated into, into 3ds Max so that you could do that photorealistic rendering right. using, using uh, ray tracing. Right. And so, so uh, I think, Michael, you're going to show us now, which you just popped up earlier, right. that's Mental Ray doing ray tracing. And I started this process uh, at the beginning of the keynote about an hour ago. Uh -huh. So simulating reality is a very computationally intense problem. And customers, uh, the only solution to it has been in the past that we have to cheat. We have to figure out ways of simplifying the process, doing interpolations to maximize what a CPU uh, can do for and us. So, so, I want, so for, speaking of, speaking of uh, CPUs, at the moment, you're currently rendering on on, um, on what? This is a workstation right yeah, here? This, this would be a typical workstation that our users would have. It has two dual quad-core um, processors. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's a lot of horsepower, and it's required even to get, you know, to simulate reality. And in fact, rendering is one of the most computationally demanding parts uh, of content creation today. Indeed, Absolutely. yes. Right. And so this is, this is a mental ray. This is a product that that was, a, was a, a revolutionized by mental images. Michael, this is how many years ago that mental ray came 20, out? 20 years ago. 20 years ago, yes. right? And it was, uh, it was one of the world's first ray tracing. First photorealistic ray tracing. Uh -huh. 
And so, so uh, you, you said it earlier, but I wonder if everybody picked it up. You launched Mental Ray to render that scene. Render one frame an hour. At the beginning of our, at the beginning of our keynote. You can see okay. it's working on 16 cores 100% of the time, and it just filled in another piece of information. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But uh, Mental Ray, even in this case, is using interpolation and other, other approaches to to sort of fake reality, it's not doing a real physical Well, scale. if you had to fake reality, everybody would want to fake it differently, right? So mm -hmm. you, you guys probably give, give uh, the user a lot of control? Right. Is that what you guys would do? Yeah, so another big problem when you want to uh, simulate reality has been that these rendering systems, because they use interpolation and different techniques to accelerate things, they have a command panel that, that looks like you're flying a 747. I mean, there's so many dials and settings and parameters uh -huh. that you can use to adjust uh, the, the faking of the reality. And so I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an architect. Mm -hmm. I just want a photorealistic render exactly. of this room. I don't want to be an expert in computer graphics. Exactly, yes. Right? And so, so uh, in order to use Mental Ray, you have to be familiar with computer graphics enough to be able to enter this panel with yes. all these parameters. Yeah. Uh -huh. yes. And it's very, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a science that they don't really want to learn. So what's unique about uh, including iRay in 3ds Max is the setup. So if we can switch our rendering, so we're going to switch from Metal Ray, and we're going to switch over to uh, iRay. And so, so this is something that, that some of the audience, oh, wrong, yeah, yeah this is something some of the audience have, have heard about. It's a, it's a technology called iRay. It is the world's first physically correct photorealistic render, right. and it's completely GPU accelerated. And, uh, and you guys are announcing today <laughs> yes. that iRay will be part of the 3ds Max package. For subscription users, next week they'll start, be able to start downloading iRay and PhysX mm -hmm. um, to have, be able to actually do these things we're going to show you right now. Okay. Now I think one important thing to stress is you've been talking about simulation for science yeah. and all these things. Here we are physically simulating every photon as it passes through the scene, we're not interpolating. We're actually doing the real hard part of the problem, physically simulating reality. Mm 